Hi friends, if you watched my last video uh, where we created a game with a cat and mouse in Love 2D and Lua, then you'll pro you're probably waiting for this video because I promised that I will explain the functions and steps that we use. So here you go. But I must say, sorry for the delay with this video. One of the reasons is because I was traveling for a few weeks. I saw many cool things like canyons, like mountains, a lot of wild right, wildlife, rivers, and much more. And I just wanted to remind you that sitting on the computer is good, but make sure you spend a lot of time outside. The second reason is I'm preparing to launch my own website. And here's why. Sometimes I want to share a link or a piece or some code with you to review it or copy it. And doing it by YouTube is not the most convenient way. Also, I'm thinking to start my blog where I can share what I learn, what, what I recommend you, like books or maybe visit somewhere or try something. So this is going to be the place where I share non-video content with you. And the third is, of course, it's a new school year. This year is way different than all my pre previous school years. Because this year, I'm learning completely online and remotely. I don't go to school. I spend more, more than half of my day here. I don't know about you guys, but I really miss school and I want to go there again. And I hope we can get back to normal life soon. Okay. Today, I'm gonna to go through some of the functions we use to build this program. I wanna tell you one thing. In programming, it is very important to understand every line of your code. Don't try to copy and paste something that you don't understand, of course, if you wanna be a good programmer. Try to look into the code, see what it does, and try to understand how it works. So to help you understand the program we wrote, I wanna go over some functions, uh, functions and what code we wrote. So let's go. The first thing that may confuse you is this argument, the DT argument in love.update function. This argument means delta time. In our game, we have moving objects, right? The, these are the cat and the mouse. And here's the issue. Depending on the computer characteristics your game runs on, the objects can move on the screen with a different speed. The reason it happens is different computers are able to generate different, a different FPS rate or frames per second. The frame is a single still image. Then many of these different images that go, that go one next to each other combined quickly change. So we see it as moving. And this is how any video works. A good example might be the flipbook animation. So to make your game play the same way on different computers, Love2D has this argument. To use it, all you have to do is multiply the value you want to change the position by this argument, exactly what we've done in our program. This argument returns a different value for different computers. So for computers with, higher F with a higher FPS rate, it returns lower delta time, but for computers with lower FPS rate, with a lower FPS rate, it returns higher delta time. As a result, you have your object move with the same speed. Another function we used is math.attan2. If you remember, we used this function to make our sprites, Jerry and the cat, to turn towards a specific direction. And this function simply returns the angle for two points. The first argument is the y position you want to go to minus your object's y position. The second argument is the same, but for the x position. This is one of the rare occasions when y comes before x. But this is not the only one place we use that value. We also use this angle to move our sprite towards a specific direction, right? See, our mouse and cat are moving to a different direction depending on the angle they turn. In Scratch, we had an easy function, point toward, and then we just use move a number of steps. But this is not the case for Love2D. We need to calculate the x and y coordinates where to move the sprite depending on the angle it turns. So how to do it? When we have an angle and some math knowledge, we can easily move our sprite in that direction. What math knowledge do we need to have? Of course, you can just remember it and use it every time you need, or if you want to understand it in details how it works, first you need to understand what do, sine, and cosine mean, and how they work and how they're used. I'm not going to explain these functions since I can't say I know them well yet, but I can recommend the source I read about it, or you can just Google them. 
Here's the resource I learned them from. But the main trick is that depending on an angle, sine and cosine return the value only between minus one and one. So when you multiply the speed value by sine and cosine for your angle, this value will be adjusted based on this angle. Sounds a little complex, right? But don't worry. Use it and read it and use it again and read it again and it will all become clear one day. Now I would like to spend some time by explaining the topic about the sprite coordinates and how you can use this knowledge to draw your sprites the way you need them to be present on the screen. We, we had one really good case in my program when the sprite didn't turn around its center but around its corner and it of course was not correct. Let me remind you of this part. You see my Jerry sprite rotates not around its center. So to fix this issue, we use these lines of code. So here we first reference to the Jerry table. In that table, we reference to the image itself by its key image. And then we call the function get width, which returns the width of your graphic object. Let's take a look at this function. The result of the execution of this line is the image object. And since it is an object, we, then we can execute many helpful functions with that object. And some of them are get width and get height that we use to get the image width and height. Now when our program knows these values, it's super easy to make a calculation and figure out the image center, right? Just divide it by two. Now when we have these values, let's go to our draw function that actually draws the image on the screen. This function may have a few required arguments or more additional optional arguments. Let's go to our docu documentation to, on the Love2D wiki. On the left menu, you can find the love.graphics link. There are many functions listed here, and one of them is our love.graphics.draw. Let's click on it to see more information. As you can see, there are many arguments. Each argument has its own explanation. The first argument is the image you are drawing on the screen. So these X and Y are simple and familiar. And these are the coordinates. Then we have the argument R. This is the angle uh, our image turns. Then we have SX and SY. In our program, we put it as 1, 1. And this is because these arguments are scale factors. So value 1 means the remain, they remain the same size. Try to change these arguments in your program and see what happens with your image sprites. And then you finally have the two arguments, OX and OY. And these are the arguments we use to fix the center of our sprites. So these arguments are used when you need to, to offset the origin of your X and Y coordinates, since on your window, if you remember, all the coordinates calculate based on the left upper corner. So in this function, when we assign the new origin x and origin y, we move the sprite's coordinates to these values. The last two arguments can be ignored now. They are not required, and I honestly don't know yet how to use them. Maybe we will learn them in my future videos. Okay, guys, now I think you'll feel more confident when you write these functions or explain them to your friends. So next video, I'm going to finish up this program and show you some new very helpful functions and game components. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, hit the like button, and click the bell to not miss any video. Bye!